Now, the incoming administration needs to focus on tackling inflation first. Now, according to experts, the government needs to figure out a way to stem food inflation because even if fuel subsidy is removed and people can still eat for a reasonable amount of money, that solves a big part of the problem plaguing the country. Now, the National Bureau of Statistics says that Consumer Price Index CPI, which measures the rate of change in prices of goods and commodities, sustained its upward trajectory to 22.04% in March compared to 21.91% in the preceding month. Now, the NBS in its CPI report for March attributed the 0.13 percentage point increase in the headline index to the rise in the prices of food and commodities. But well, last year, the World Bank has said that removing the petrol subsidy could cause the headline inflation rate to rise by an additional 2.0 to 2.5 percentage points. We will focus on tackling food inflation ahead of the fuel subsidy removal. Business Insight starts right now. I am Justin Akadoni. Welcome back now to a roundup of major business headlines. Nigerian equities market closed negative as the key market indicator declined by 107.03 basic point amid positive market breath. Now the NGX all share index declined by 0.20% to close at 52,296.48 basis point as against the 0.32 percentage gain recorded previously to close at 52,403.51 BPS at the end of the last trading session. In Naira terms, the NGX market cap records a 58.28 billion Naira loss. Year to date, the NGX ASI stands at 2.04%. Now, the total volume traded declined by 82.41% to close at 550.29 million Naira, valued at 5.15 billion Naira, and traded in two or 6,250 deals. Access Core was the most traded stock by volume with 150.07 million naira or million units traded. Sectoral performance was broadly positive as five NGX sector index closed southward, 12 sector index closed northward and three closed flat. NGX Food and Beverages Index advanced by 2.90% to top the gainers chart, while the Tony Index declined by 2.85% to top the losers chart. Now, the Securities and Exchange Commission has opened a regulatory incubation program for fintech firms operating or seeking to operate in the Nigerian capital market. Now, this was contained in a circular released by the Commission. According to the circular, the portal will be open from the 28th of April to the 26th of May, and registered capital market operators as well as unregistered fintech innovators that require regulation are encouraged to apply. Now, the SEC said the move to open a portal comes from a 2021 circular where the Commission announced the imminent rollout of the SEC RI program for fintechs operating or seeking to operate in the Nigerian capital market. Now, the efforts by the Central Bank of Nigeria to ensure an efficient payment system in the country have boosted the e Naira initiative, with transactions hitting 1.4 million Naira as at the end of March. The governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Gadwin Emefili, disclosed this at the ongoing CBN's 34th Seminar for Finance Correspondents and Business Editors holding in Calabar, Cross River State. Emefili was represented by the Director of Policy of the CBN, Dr. Hassan Mahmoud, said that his team took advantage of COVID-19 and other developments in country to drive the electronic payment channels. And now to energy matters. Oil prices sank about 5% to a five-week low on Tuesday on concerns about the economy of the United States politicians discussing ways to avoid a debt default and investors prepare for more rate hikes this week. Brent futures fell $3.99 or 5.0% to settle at $75.32 a barrel, while the West Texas Intermediate crude fell $4 or 5.3% to end at $71.66. 
that was the lowest close for both benchmarks since March the 24, and was also their biggest one-day percentage declines since early January. Now, oil prices and Wall Street main indexes both fell after United States Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen said the government could not run out of money within a month. Away from all of that, I'm now being joined by Alester Wilcox, the chairman of the Lagos and District Society of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria, ICANN. Thanks for joining me, Alester. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's my utmost pleasure. Thank you. All right, we're looking at food inflation. We're also looking at the fuel subsidy, all of the impact on Nigerians. Now, food inflation is higher than the consumer price index. How can the country tackle food inflation in the wake of talks of subsidy removal and all of that? Well, um, it's, it's, it's a very good analogy to uh, tie this to high, I mean, high-headed, dreaded monster together, uh, talking about food inflation and the, the subsidy. Uh, for one, um, the issue of fuel has been a very current decimal. Uh, so the, the issue of uh, fuel subsidy has been a, an albatross, let me say, a kind of uh, a bone that is tied at the, at, at the neck of the, of, of, of the dog that is not able to eat, is not able to, remove, to, 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 I mean, to drop. Now, if you look at food inflation in Nigeria today, inflation, I don't know why the, uh, the Bureau of uh, uh, Statistics I mean, it's not piercing through and uh, identifying the various causes of inflation. Uh, inflation generally should be caused by input-output equation. I mean, that is uh, demand and supply, input-output uh, equation, and all that factors. But in Nigeria, the, 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 the parameter seems to widen out to other non-economic factors. For instance, let me just give you an instance, um, my brother. Uh, just this period that you had Naira scarcity between the period of January of let's say uh, January till about um, about uh, March when we had that Naira scarcity. Do you know the price of foodstuff and other commodities jumped up? This has nothing to do with economic indices. It's just the fact that people just take advantage of situations because there is no Naira and everybody is looking for what to buy. People who hitherto had product just increase the price. And that is part of the problem that I think that the uh, uh, Nigerian Bureau of Statistics are not identifying. So that government that is going to be, be the policy making in terms of tackling those, will know some of those uh, extraneous factors that are, do not have anything to do with uh, economies. Secondly, you're looking at the issue of uh, a, a low productivity in terms of food supply. Today, if you go to the market today, you discover that tomatoes, things like tomatoes, which is everyday, a meal, which is for everyday meal, is absent in the market. Why? Of course, they will tell you it's not the season. As for well, something like plantain, which is the staple food of Nigerians, I mean, since uh, last month, you go to market, you can't find plantain. So, there are various factors that are affecting food inflation. Scarcity, external factors, Nigerian factors, atmospheric factors, uh, uh, grid factors, just, just name it. So, the government of the day must begin to identify these factors and begin to know how to develop countermeasures to attack these factors. Because if you just take it on the book basis, on the demand supply basis, on what the MBS is ruling out, you, you are not making any impact because that doesn't affect the, 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 the market in Daleko, it doesn't affect the market in, uh, in, uh, in Bruno Gwari, it doesn't affect the market in Africa or somewhere in Ogap in, uh, in Kosovo State. Now, but you must identify what are the parameters that causes this inflation. Because even when sometimes you find the commodity in the market, you just go that the price just go up without any reason, you know. And then again, so if these factors are not identified, oh. whatever policymakers are doing, they might just be doing the book, they might just be reading by the books, and it's not affecting what happens on the ground. And this is very important for a government, a new government that is about to tackle this issue. Right. Productivity is low. In terms of the agricultural sector, very, very low. I was going to say that, um, Alester, because um, crop production is still around um, 20 to 22 percent of Nigeria's GDP. Can you break it down for us as per what we have in our hands? But look, we, 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 I, I, as a matter of fact, my brother, we are having a disaster looming in our hands because um, 
every day there is this urban migration, rural urban migration. And most people that are supposed to utilize the abundance of the land are abandoning it and moving to urban cities just to get million jobs. When I mean million jobs, a lot of them just want to become Okada riders, a lot of them just want to become traders, a lot of them are looking for a way to exit the country. These are persons. And then the fact that um, we have not channeled, I'm, I'm, not, I'm talking about state government because, look, each time we talk about agricultural production, we should, we should pay less attention at the federal and pay more attention at the state because the land belongs to the state and food that produced in the states. Now, state government has not been able in all their policies to attack the, the, the issue of agriculture in terms of putting more people in the farms. If you go to every aspect, apart from maybe the north, that is still heavily agricultural, the, I, mean, I, mean, I, mean, I mean an agrarian uh, uh, economy, down south, all the belts in the south that used to produce agriculture in the southeast, in the south-south, in the southwest. Most people have migrated. Now, what you have are older men aging out population, aging out population in the farms. Meanwhile, the younger ones that are supposed to replace them, uneducated people, people that have of, uh, of, uh, of strength, you not either find them looking for a job in local government to become uh, 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 ticket collectors in motor parks. You, uh, sometimes it, 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 it breaks my heart when I travel along the southeast. And you see able-bodied young men just stand, sitting somewhere, idling away on the road with a stick, blocking the road, waiting for a trailer to pass so that they can collect money. That is what just what's going on. You see able-bodied young men Mm. Because of uh, 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 the, the, the new case of Okada riding, the just buy Okada stay in the junction and be preparing for These are persons that should be utilized in the farm. Uh -huh. And the farm is getting drier out, empty, as the go back. We have a disaster looming in terms of food production. All right. Uh, we still have um, Alistair Wilcox uh, with us uh, in part two when we return from this quick break. We'll be looking at the fuel subsidy removal, the regulation, and of course, social intervention programs in a moment to join us again. Oh, welcome back. Oh, we still have Alistair Wilcox, uh, Chairman Lagos and uh, um, Island and um, District Society of um, ICANN, and uh, we are looking at the fuel subsidy removal amid the current and um, biting inflation in the country. Now, let's talk about fuel subsidy removal and deregulation, and which is not usually done in isolation without proper social programs years before the action is actually taken. I know government had talked about grants to cushion the effect uh, with the grants they got from the World Bank. Should it not include social programs that would put food on the table of Nigerian Celesta. Does it affect? As, as far as I'm concerned, the way of social programs is being managed in the, in the country has been fraught with a lot of fraud, a lot of corruption, and uh, nobody can lay credence to exactly what is happened or what is happening with whatever social intervention. Well, this is not the first time we are traveling this road. We have always traveled this road with the removal of sources, sometimes partial, and then the, 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 the announcement will always be the money realized will be invested in agriculture, invested in transportation, and then labor unions, uh, NLC or labor unions will be giving buses for... So those, for me, they have not solved the problem. Look, at some point in our life, this, the, uh, the, 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 the first of them must go. Unfortunately, we've left it too far. And because we have too many Shylock businessmen in Nigeria, too many Shylock and greedy, very greedy, wicked kind of wicked uh, 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 businessmen in Nigeria. Today, diesel is going for as much as 700 naira, oh. which is the highest in any part, I think the highest in any part of the sub, uh, West African sub-region. Ghana has regulated for a long time, but the price of diesel in Ghana, it does, it does not go beyond about 500 and, and, or so, uh, in terms of compared to, I mean, I mean to the naira. Ghana is already a food, food regulated uh, uh, um, uh, uh, energy sector. There's no more subsidy. I mean, the price adjusts with, 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 with. But the price of diesel in Ghana is no more than the, the I mean, hovering around the 500 naira mark. But today in Nigeria, diesel goes for 700 and some, some 800. Why? Wicked Shylock traders, wicked Shylock businessmen who do not consider the interest of the, the suffering and plight of people and they just do what they want to do because they call it a free market. And there is always reasons to identify. So, 
the government must be very careful. A new government coming in cannot just delve into the issue of subsidy removal. Yes, it's gulping too much money through corrupt means. As a matter of fact, the amount of corruption that has embedded in the fuel subsidy regime in recent time is unprecedented. We thought we've had the last of it during the general administration when trillions of naira was paid to, uh, to middlemen, to contractors in the name of fuel subsidy. We thought we, ha we, we, we have had the, the, the last of it. But even with NMPC, being the sole importer and being the sole controller of fuel uh, management and distribution in Nigeria. Mm. The figure keep rising because nobody can give a truthful account of what is our consumption and all those things. So, and nobody can give a good account of what is the template, what template is being used to measure and to know the actual. You see, we have so much unpatriotic uh, people in, the, in, in, in our country, both in government out of government in business. And so people do not care about the interest of the honest man. It's just for what they can eck out and what they can steal out of the system. And no matter who's us is God, no matter who dies, no matter who is in pain, no matter who's in trouble, it doesn't matter to, to most right. Nigerians. And that is the funny aspect of our society. So a government that must remove first subsidy as a new incoming government must look at, critically at the private. It's not a matter of talking about palliative. No, palliative palliative doesn't work uh -huh. because it is also fraught with, with suspicion. Uh, 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 what do you call it? Uh, um, uh, 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 social investment program. It doesn't work. How, how, long will, how long will that sustain? I know that the, the, the first subsidy must, must go at some point. Yeah. The state governors are up in arms shouting, or oh, they can't pay salaries. Even the ones they have, they mismanage it. There is so much, there is so much corruption, so much inefficiency, right, like so that. much distortion in our system that some of these things that are good policies Mm. But because of our people, our corruption, because of our wickedness, we make them not to work. Alasta, let's still talk about corruption and talk about incentives right now. You know, the government over time, over the years, have had several intervention programs for farmers to boost their food production in the country. Uh, we know from the Anchor Boroughs program, we know from the Green Revolution, so many as laudable as they were. But oftentimes we find out that um, uh, these uh, interventions or these uh, policies don't really get to the actual farmers. How do we stem these um, infractions? How do we stem it in the bud, really? Sincerely speaking, um, I have I've, I've, been, I've been following national affairs right from the time of Operation Feed the Nation of Shagari administration, uh, through the NALDA program of uh, Babangida administration, through other interventions in terms of the agriculture, and recently the MFA failed. I think it's I think for me I, I think I will call it a failed a failed water uh, money down the drain project of the Anchor the, both the Anchor Brothers scheme and the rice intervention scheme. Yes, the rice intervention scheme tries to. Uh, I, 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 I mean, tries to uh, uh, increase the rice, pro the rice production in the country. And to a large extent, yes, it succeeded. But did it succeed to drive down the price of rice? No. Because the same people who borrowed money, who the CBN gave money to produce rice, are the same people that either exporting this rice or selling it at a price that is not affordable. I cannot imagine that even with all intervention, rice is still... A, a political a tool and the price of rice still goes up. So intervention programs have really, really not helped to stem anything because it is fraught with corruption. It is fraught with less regulation because if you're intervening in a program, that means you have control of that program and you must protect that program. But this is whereby you intervene and then from the back door, you receive your own kickback, you get your own money, you, you, you give with the right hand, you take with the left hand, and then you will allow, allow the people to run haywire with whatever interventions you have done. And that is the, our bane. And I still maintain the fact that it is the deep-rooted corruption, deep-rooted wicked. In fact, it is beyond corruption. It is wickedness. Around, I just gave you a price. In Ghana, you can, you can find out. The price of this is no more than the... I, I don't think it's up to the 600 Naira mark if you compare it to Naira, to, I mean, a Naira CD equation. But today in Nigeria, this will go for 800 Naira. Where are they buying it? Where, where, I mean, is it not the same market? Is it not the international market? All so, right. the wickedness of people has made our economy, like I just told you, it, when there was uh, uh, currency scarcity, people increased price. If there is rain, people increase price. So, these are all economic. All right, Alistair, we have to let you go. And our government must recognize those external factors for all us right. to make impact.
in whatever program that we are doing for All right. government to really have the benefit of this country. All right, thank you so much. We have been speaking with Alesta Wilcox, uh, the chairman of uh, Lagos and District Society of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria, ICANN. Thank you so much, Alesta, for your time. Thank you for having me. It's always my great pleasure. Thank you. All right, as we go on the show, I'll leave you with, with this feature on healthcare financing. Well, medical experts have made recommendations on how to improve health financing and ensure the efficiency in Nigeria. They came up with this on the sidelines of a continuing medical evaluation uh, program in Lagos with the theme, Healthcare Diversification in a Developing Economy. I'll leave you with details of that report and I'll see you again tomorrow. My name is Justin Akadonye. Many thanks for watching. Bye for now. The way a country finances its healthcare system is a critical determinant for reaching health coverage. In Nigeria, the health sector is financed through different sources and mechanisms. Unfortunately, achieving the correct blend remains a challenge. Medical experts have converged on this CME meeting put together by Cleaner Lancet to tackle some of the inherent challenges access to healthcare, interdisciplinary collaboration, as well as medical assets financing take center stage. Well, we know that most of the patients in Nigeria, about 70% of them are out of pocket, but there are initiatives that have been in place. We've always had health insurance, we have um, donors as well, and the government has also earmarked the basic health care um, fund that they've put in place to be able to help the citizen to access it. So apart from budgetary allocation. These are um, areas and ways that we can now see that the government as well and even the private sector is trying to synergize and help to you know ensure that the citizens are able to afford health care. Uh, there are lots of health care enthusiasts that do not even have access to the right funding thereby not being able to set up um, you know the kind of standard that they probably want to set up, not being able to you know, the kind of um, technology or equipment, modern equipment, that are necessary for, um, you know, a startup healthcare organization. So basically, in the medical laboratory um, space where we play, um, over the years there's been improvement, there's been a lot of entrance. The professionals does course on cancer management in Nigeria, its efficiency, and the need to ensure standardization in the medical laboratory science space. It is that go into determining what we now talk about in cancer care is individualized, uh, personalized treatment. And it means that if Mr. A and Mr. B have a particular cancer, because of their genetic makeup, they will not manifest the cancer in the same way. And they may necessarily not benefit from the same treatment. So those are the things that will be updating the community about that. Cancer is not one disease, but it is a heterogeneous disease. And for the laboratory, what is expected is the ISO 15189, the 2012 version. Now, two days ago, the 2022 version was just published. So it gives room for additional provisions for the capturing of the quality standard. So when you understand the quality standard, now you begin to look at it, how can we implement it? So the implementation of it is key. Now some of the challenges include um, uh, the ability for us to understand what is expected from us, two personnel that have this uh, quality management system expert, the infrastructure technology to ensure that this is done. And with the rate of brain drain currently in, um, in, in the country, a lot of our experts which we are training are moving Across, across the country. There is a dire need to ensure that resources are used more efficiently, while at the same time removing financial barriers by shifting from out-of-pocket payment OOPs to order hidden resources. <laughs>